بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله على سيدنا محمد الفاتح الخاتم الناصر الهادي وعلى آله حق قدره ومقداره العظيم قال المؤلف رحمة الله عليه أول ما يجب على المكلف تصحيح إيمانه The first obligation upon the responsible one is to correct his path. And yesterday we discussed some of the elements one needs to have the ability to correct one's path. And the first thing is to know Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala and the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because before you believe you have to know when you know Allah then you will live in Allah and everything that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala informs you and tells you to believe in to believe in Allah to believe in the angels that are created beings created by Allah from light they do not eat, they do not drink, they do not sleep. Can you please close the door? Please. Thank you. They cannot disobey Allah Taala, as Allah describes them in the Quran. لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. To believe in the books. All the books revealed to different messengers from Adam to see you now, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi They are many, as you can see in the hadith of Abu Dhar. But we believe in them not as books that are correct and sound as they were before because Allah wa ta'ala tells us that these people to whom Allah gave these books they all changed took whatever they wanted out of it and added whatever they wanted to it until the Quran arrives and Allah wa ta'ala knowing that Quran is going to be the last and the final message he took it upon himself to protect to protect it inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr wa inna lahu lahafil it is us it is we Allah who sent down this book a dhikr and it is upon us to protect it to preserve it لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم الحميد. And to believe in the messengers, all of them. لا نفرق بين أحد بين أحد من رسله. But at the same time, we also believe that the messenger who came to abrogate the laws and all of all the previous messengers. And to be their seal is Sayyidina Rasulullah <coughs> and no one after him will come as a messenger. Even Sayyidina Isa, when he comes back, when he comes back, he's not coming back as a messenger. He's going to be a believing man of Sayyidina Rasulullah and he's going to confirm what the Prophet said. And he will kill the jail and will denounce those who consider him as God. وَأَنَّ عِيسَى يَقْتُلُ الدَّجَّالَ وَفَحْيَا يُوجَ وَقَصِّ الْوَالَى نَارٍ تَسُوْقُ النَّارَ أَرْضَ الْحَشْرِ وَفِتْنَةِ الْمَحْيَا وَظَنِّ قَبِرِ These are among the things that one has to believe. To believe in all the messengers and to believe in the afterlife. 
in the life after death or the day of judgment or the last day or the Omil Akhir and to believe in Al Qadr that everything that happens happens under the will and the watch and the knowledge and the supervision of Allah Ta'ala. Nothing happens without the qadr of Allah Ta'ala. Wa kullu shaykin indahu bi miqdar Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the author summarizes this in one word or in few words. أول ما يجب على المكلف تصحيح إيمانه. And yesterday we went through the qualities that are necessary for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, such as existence, such as uh, beginninglessness and permanence in continued existence, absolute and universal independence being different from his creation, being unique or oneness of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala in his essence, in his uh, entity, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his attributes and actions, power, will, knowledge, and life, hearing, speech, and sight. These are the qualities or the necessary attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the opposite of these are impossible fi haqqihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we say that what is possible is us, our existence. He creates, he wills to create us. He could have will to do, not create us as well subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we talk about the prophets, there are qualities also, attributes that are necessary for them. يَجِبُ الْرِسْ لِلْكِرَامِ السِّرْقُ أَمَانَةٌ تَبْلِيغُهُمْ يَحِقُّهُمْ وَحَالٌ لِلْكِرْبِبُ وَالْمَنْهِيُّ كَعَدَمِ التَّبْلِيغِ يَا ذَكِيُّ The fault of Ibn Ashi, Rahmatullah Ali, is Al-Murshid, Al-Mu'in, Ala Tharubi, Min Al-Urubi, he said, the following attributes are necessary for the noble messengers. Truthfulness, trustworthiness in obedience, and conveying the message of Allah Taala. And the opposite of these qualities and attributes are impossible for them: lying or dishonesty. A prophet never lies, never. Even people whom we narrate the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ in the chain, if we know someone of them has ever lied. His hadith is removed. It's not taken into consideration. That alone, the one who speaks from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who's sent by Allah, they are protected from sinning. And lying is the worst of all sins. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَتْكَرِ الْكَذِبَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِعَيَاتِ اللَّهِ Only those who don't believe in the signs of Allah can lie. The Prophet once was asked, does a Muslim steal? He said, it happens. It might happen. Does a Muslim commit zina? He said, it's possible. Does a believer lie? He said, no. He was categorical that a believer doesn't lie. So a Prophet cannot lie. They cannot be dishonest. They are trustworthy and they convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The opposite of this is acting in is disobedience. They cannot disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Masumun. And they cannot convey they 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 um they connect they can they convey the message and the opposite is not conveying is mustahil, is impossible. And later on he will say, Jawaz al-Arabi alayhim hujjatu wa qawwaha bihim tasallim hikmatu. He say, all these things that happen to us, such as illness, or sickness, or poverty, and all these things happen to the prophets. Why? 
He said the wisdom behind it is that whenever one of these things happen to us, we know that people who are closer to Allah, more loved by Allah, used to go through these tests too. As the Prophet said, that anything that happened to you, look at my musibah. And Allah tells us, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ سُوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ So you have in the message of Allah the best example or a good example. So the author says, ثُمَّ مَعْرِفَةُ مَا يُسْلِحُ بِهِ فَرْضَ عَيْنِهِ كَأَحْكَانِ الصَّلَاةِ وَالطَّهَارَةُ وَالصِّيَانِ Once we correct our iman, once the responsible one, the mukallaf, corrects and rectifies his faith, his iman, what is next? He says, then he must know what is necessary to correct his personal application. There are two types of applications. Fardul Ayn or Fardul Kifayah. Personal application and collective application. And to give us an example, he says, such as the rules of prayer. Can someone pray Zuhr for you? No. Only you can pray Zuhr. For yourself. Can someone fast on your behalf? No, nobody can fast on your behalf. Can someone make you wudu on your behalf? No, nobody can make wudu except you for yourself. That's why he says, such as the rules of prayer. So if no one can make prayer for us, we have to know the ahkam of salah. Because the scholars have differences whether the person who makes salah without knowing the rulings of salah, whether his salah is valid or no. Because Allah says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَّا إِلَّا Know that there is not to be worshipped but Allah. Even before saying, لَا إِلَّا 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 Allah is telling, us, telling you, no, لَا إِلَّا 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 Before you act upon, لَا إِلَّا 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 Before you say, قُمْ فَأَنْذِرْ قُمْ قُمْ إِلَّا إِلَّا قَلِلًا one has to know what is necessary to correct his personal obligations, such as the rules of prayer, purification, tahara, and fasting. And the list goes on. And that, that is the ibadah. There are also what is called al muamala. For example, one who wants to be a a businessman by selling, for example. He has to know the rulings on selling. You want to get married? You have to know ahkamu ziwaj, ahkamu nikah. Whether by studying or asking the scholars. Later on, he will tell us that it is not permissible for a responsible one. One, meaning for a mukalla, for an adult Muslim, to engage in anything without knowing, without knowing the ruling of Allah Tabarak wa Taala. ولا يحد له أن يفعل الفعل حتى يعلم حكم الله به. He say, if I don't know what I, what I, what I should do, he say, well, yes, Allah If you don't know, if one does not know, then one has to ask the scholars. So, أحكام المعاملة أسوء. When we have to engage in them, we have to know them. So he says we have to know our personal obligations. The, uh, the, what is necessary to correct our personal obligations. And I say there are two types of obligations. The personal obligation is from the line. The collective obligation is from the al-kifaya. Like such as Salatul Janazah. When a person dies among the Muslim community, it is upon all of us to take care of this person, to pray upon him, and to bury him. And if some of us does it, you know, the obligation is removed from us. If none of us does it, we have collective guilt. That's why it is called collective obligation. So some can do it on behalf of others. But our personal obligations, nobody can do it for us. So that's very serious. Here comes now the studying of ilm al because through ilm al one can know what is obligatory personally and what is collectively obligatory upon him. 
ويجب عليه أن يحافظ على حدود الله ويقف عند أمره ونهيه. He said the responsible one is obligated to preserve the boundaries, the boundaries of of Allah, سبحانه وتعالى, and observe his commands and prohibitions. Meaning, we always have in mind when we are to act, whether this is permitted by Allah, تبارك وتعالى. Whether it is an obligation to do, whether it is prohibited, and you have the ala hududillah, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi says, that every king has hima ala wa inna hima Allahi maharimuhu. He said one must is obligated to preserve the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa taala and observe His commands. Wa yaqiba inda amrihi. And his prohibitions. And he said, وَيَتُوبَ إِلَى اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ قَبْلَ أَنْ يَسْخَطَ عَلَيْهِ The responsible one must repent before Allah becomes angry with him. Before Allah becomes angry with us, we have to make tawbah. Everyone. Because Allah says, it is a command in the Quran. تُوبُوا وَتُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا أَيُّهَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Make repentance to Allah. All of you who claim to be believers. All of you who are believing, men and women. And Allah says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَتُبْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ ظَالِمُونَ Those who do not repent are the wrong doers. And now he's telling us the conditions of tawbah. وَشُرُوطُ التَّوْبَةِ النَّدَمُ عَلَى مَا فَاتَ وَالنِّيَّةُ أَنْ لَا يَعُودَ إِلَى ذَنْبٍ هِمَا بَقِيَ مِنْ عُمُورِهِ وَأَنْ يَتْرُكَ الْمَعْصِيَةَ هِي سَاعَتِهَا إِنْ كَانَ مُتَلَبِّسًا بِهَا I'm gonna go through this quickly because time is flying. He says the conditions of repentance, Tawbah, are three. Number one, remorse over what was done. Another ma'ala ma'fat. One has to feel remorse in one's heart over what one has done. If you do something wrong, we have to feel this nether in our heart. That is the first condition of Tawbah. If one does not have this remorse over what was done, then one is not ready to make Tawbah. Number two, he said, an intention never to return to the sin for the rest of one's life. من عمره. Number three, وَأَنْ يَدْهُكَ الْمَعْصِيَةَ فِي سَاعَتِهَا إِنْ كَانَ مُتَلَبِّسًا بِهَا To leave the sin immediately if one was in the midst of performing it. For example, I'm doing something that is wrong. And I said, I feel remorse. I have, and I, I, I regret that I'm doing this. And I have the intention never to do it. But let me just finish it. He said, no, no, that's not over. You cannot finish it. You have to cut it. The moment you have this feeling, you have this yaqadha, they call it. And yaqadha, the wakefulness, it can come at any time. Allah can give you tawfiq to have yaqadha. You see, this, this, this person who wanted to commit zina, as the Prophet Islam tells us, and when the lady, he, he, he wanted to give money to, the, to, the, to, the, to, her, to, to his cousin, who didn't want to do bad, but she felt... In, she was in need. So when he gave the money and he wanted to do something wrong, the woman reminded him of Allah. Automatically he had this wakefulness and he made tawbah. And he gave her the money, everything he, she, she, she needed. And whenever you have this feeling, take advantage of it. When he says, you cannot say, let me just finish it and then I will make tawbah. And he said, "Wala yahidu lahu an yuakhir tawbata." It is not permissible to delay repentance. So the fact that we repent, we delay repentance is actually another sin. Sinning is a sin, and delaying repentance is is another. And every time we delay, we are multiplying our sin. It is not permissible for him to delay repentance. Wala yahidu lahu an yuakhir tawbata. ولا يقول حتى يهدي لله نور 
to say, I will repent once Allah guides me. He says, oh, you know, if Allah guides me, I will stop doing this. I will. He says, فَإِنَّهُ مِنْ عَلَامَةِ الشَّقَاءِ وَالْخِذْلَانِ وَطَمْسِ الْبَصِيعَةِ Verily, this is from amongst the signs of shaka. Saying, I will wait until Allah guides me, is a sign of three things. Number one, a shaka. That is wretchedness, uh, meaning the opposite of sa'ada, of success. Wal khidlan, it is a sign of abandonment, that one is abandoned by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Wal iyadu billah. What comes in Basira? Number three, it is a sign of blinding of the spiritual inner side. If the inner eye is blinded or is blind, the inner side is blind, one says, I will wait until Allah guides me. We ask Allah wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq to make tawbah and to never return to sin. Hada wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amen.